Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Hey, Epic Conquerors. Aren't you so glad to know that everything's possible in Christ? Yo, I'm finishing up on our 12 series podcast called Possessing Your Promised Land. And Chad and I have been talking about that the first 10 chapters. Now today, chapter 11, I'm going to fly solo on this one. And I'm looking forward to sharing so many amazing truths for us so that we can continue conquering and possessing the promises of God that are yes and amen. That's right. They sure are to all those who are called according to his purpose. Wow, what a privilege to be a king's kid, to be a child of the Most High God. This 12 podcast series on possessing our promised land has really been an awesome refresher, as well as in some cases an eye-opener, as we see how God has required of you and I to go in and possess the land. I think so many times as believers, we kind of have a wait-and-see attitude, and a wait-and-see attitude will cause you to just keep waiting, <laughs> waiting and waiting. And then you probably get discouraged and then just give up all hope and then just fall away from it. But that's the opposite of what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go forward and, and take that land that God has given us and possess it and destroy all the enemies that come against us, doubt, unbelief, anxiety, fear, all those things that try to thwart our faith and keep us stuck in doubt and unbelief. You know, Jesus could do no mighty works in some of the towns that he visited, the Bible says, because of their unbelief. So that's for you and I, epic conquerors, to continue strong in faith, strong in our belief. And faith without works or action, it's dead. It's void of any power. You've got to combine the two, faith and works, and then you will see some traction happening, and you'll see yourself inch by inch or mile by mile, whatever the case may be, taking the territory in Jesus' name. So we got to keep up, keep getting up, and keep going, and that's how we conquer and overcome. Whatever comes in front of us, we just stand there in the name of the Lord, take authority over it, perhaps curse it, rebuke it, bind it, whatever we need to do to it, and then we move forward. And a lot of times, when a lot of things are coming up against me, then it lets me know, aha, I'm on to something here. Because if the enemy wasn't coming against me with so much uh, backlash on everything, then I, I, it gives me the upper hand to know that he is overplaying his hand that he's scared spitless of what God is about to do to bring those promises to pass. So he's doing everything he can, a little sneaky peek to try to keep me off my game of faith so that I won't continue to persevere. But he's a loser and I'm going to persevere anyway in the name of the Lord. So I encourage you epic conquerors to take that same posture. We see that posture in all the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints as well that God has written down for us in our Bibles so that we could be encouraged and understand that they also had to overcome things. And it's no different for you and I in this 21st century. We're to continue to keep the faith. You know, the Bible says that the Lord is looking to see if there's anybody that has faith. And I want to say, yes, Lord, here I am. I got faith. And I believe you no matter what the obstacles are. I believe you. And to show that I believe you, I'm taking steps towards that thing in Jesus' name. So that's how we do it. Woohoo! I love it. So today in this podcast, we are in Deuteronomy chapter 11. And the next podcast will be the last chapter in this 12-chapter podcast series that we're doing on possessing the promised land. One of the things that you know that Chad and I have been talking about a lot in the previous podcast is the repetition that God continues to have to do because we have short memory spans, it seems like. Yeah, we all have to agree on that. You can hear something in the morning and then forget it by the afternoon. 
or sometimes even myself, I'm like heading toward the, uh, the room to go get something. And then I get in the room and I'm like, what did I come in here for? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you laughing because you do it too, right? So repetition, it's the motor of learning. It's how we learn something by hearing it again and again. And in fact, that's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's our faith in Jesus Christ. Now the enemy, the Antichrist, He uses that same formula, but he constantly bombards our brains with false narrative, with lies and deception and manipulation and keeps repeating it ad nauseum so that we hear it and hear it and hear it. And so eventually it starts seeping in and then pretty soon it starts pouring in and then it's a belief in the wrong thing. So we have to be on guard about that. And that's why the Bible repeats it so many times. Don't forget the Lord your God. Don't forget this and don't forget that. And so we want to continue looking at that in this chapter 11 of Deuteronomy. It starts out the very first verse. It says, therefore, and the therefore is there because of what went beforehand in chapter 10, which was our last podcast. And this is where God kind of recounted to them all the amazing things that he brought them through to deliver them from Egypt. So because of all of the things that they had gone through and witnessed and experienced, he's going, therefore, you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his precepts, and his commandments always. So once again, God's having to admonish us as epic conquerors to keep the faith, keep our love for God white hot. Don't let anything cause us to cool down in our passion, our zeal for the things of God. And remember all the things that he has brought you through in your lifetime. Yes, he's a faithful God. And in verse 2, it says, And know this, know this day, that I'm not speaking to your children who have not personally known and seen all the things I brought you through, the instructions and the discipline that I gave them, my greatness, my mighty hand and my outstretched arm, my signs and my deeds, which I did for you in Egypt, and all the things he lists in the next few verses. And the reason he says he's not going to teach them to your children is because he says, I want you to teach them to your children. I want you to tell your children what I brought you through, how I've helped you in each and every situation so that they can see my hand at work in your life. And since I did it for you, I will also do it for them as they keep their love for me white hot and walk their faith walk in obedience to all of my commands as well. Then they shall see with their own eyes because he says here in verse 7, For your eyes have seen all the great works of the Lord which I did, and therefore you shall keep all the commandments which I command you, and you must be strong and go in and possess the land so that you may live long in the land which I am giving to you that I gave to your fathers and to your descendants. And it's a land flowing with milk and honey. In other words, it's a land of provision of everything that you need. It is going to be in that land. For the land which you go in to possess, verse 10, is not like the land of Egypt from where you came out, where you sowed your seed and you watered it and you labored, very hard labor, and you didn't get much from it because it went to the Egyptians. But the land, verse 11, which you enter in to possess is a land of hills and valleys and drinks water of the rain of the heavens, a land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always upon it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Mm. When you possess the promises of God from that moment until you go to heaven, the provision of God will be there in that situation because you have gone in and conquered in Jesus name. And then verse um, 13, it says, and if, I love it when I see that word if, you should circle it because it means it's conditional. And if 
you will diligently heed my commandments, which I commanded you to love the Lord your God, serve him with all your mind and heart and soul, with your entire being. Then I will give the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your grain, your new wine and your oil. And I will give grass in your fields for your cattle so that you may eat and be full. Woo! I tell you what, the goodness of God, the blessing of God, his ability to provide and sustain us in our promises that he's given to us, which are yes and amen. That's really awesome, isn't it? And in verse 13, when he says, if you will diligently, you could actually put the word since so that it kind of gives a different flavor in that way. Since you diligently heed my commandments and you do everything I tell you and you love me passionately, since you're doing that, then guess what? Your promises are going to be fully flourishing in every aspect. So that's a wonderful way to think about it because I'm going to be a sense person, not an if person. Since I'm going to love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, and passion, with all my strength, with all my being, I've lived that way my entire lifetime, and I'm not going to stop now. I'm going to keep on going. So verse 16 now says, take heed to yourselves. So what does that mean? It means pay attention to yourself. Watch yourself. Critique yourself. Check yourself. Know what you're doing and why you're doing it so that you're not wasting and frittering away time and wasting things when you could be using that resource of energy and finances and t time, whatever else you have, could be used for good purposes, right? So sometimes we do waste and fritter away a lot of things that are unnecessary. So take heed to yourselves lest your mind and heart be deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. You know, the heart is deceitful and, and wicked, the Bible tells us, and it's so easy to get manipulated. And the enemy of our soul, he knows how to do that. Now, well, he's very good at manipulating and deceiving us and tricking us and distracting us and sending us packages that are wrapped up in paper that calls our name with a big bow on it in the perfect color that you are drawn to. And he just delivers that, rings the doorbell and runs away. And you go out to see what's at your doorstep. And ooh, it calls your name. And you can get so distracted and off track. And it doesn't have to be bad things. It can be good, fun things. But they're moving you off the plumb line of doing the will of God for your life. So that's why we have to pay attention to ourselves and make sure that we're keeping the main thing the main thing. Keep your priorities right. And that takes discipline, doesn't it? It surely does. And we're all susceptible to wanting to um, be easy on ourselves and not be fully disciplined. And in some things, okay, you can get by with that a little bit and it kind of, mm, that feels good. But when it comes to the things of God and spiritual things, woo! That has high stakes. And so we want to pay attention to those things and make sure we keep them priority. So take heed to yourselves lest you get deceived and you turn aside and you spend all of your time and energy and passion and resources on things other than serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you're not doing that, then verse 17 says, and the Lord's anger will be kindled against you and he'll shut up the heavens so that there shall be no rain and the land will not yield its fruit and you will perish quickly off the good land which the Lord gives you. Therefore, you shall lay all these words in your mind and heart and in your entire being and bind them for a sign upon your hand and as forehead bands between your eyes and you shall teach them to your children speaking of them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you rise up and you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Now, why would God say, go and do all this stuff. And then if you don't love me with all your heart, then boy, my anger will be kindled against you. Well, think of it this way. If you're with your spouse 
You said, I do at the altar. And you pledge your faithfulness to each other. And then you see your spouse flirting around with other people and spending money on other people and spending time with other people and not doing that for you, their beloved spouse. <laughs> uh, you get angry, don't you? Yeah, there's a rightful jealousy not a wrong jealousy, but there's a rightful jealousy that when we have committed ourselves, made vows one to another, entered into covenant with one another, then when someone breaks that covenant, it hurts. It's a betrayal. And you take back what you promised because they've broken their vow. They've broken their covenant with you. So it's on us. God will always be faithful. He, no matter what, he will. He cannot be unfaithful. It's not in him. So when we, we're the one that swings around, when we veer off and we kind of start thinking, well, I, I'm good now with God, and then we just let other things creep in and take our energy, our love, our passion, our zeal, our resources, our time, all of that, and we don't love the Lord with all of our heart and soul and mind, then we are on a slippery slope because now we're flirting with other things to fill the voids in our life or to make us feel better or to medicate ourselves or to uh, just splurge on ourselves or spoil ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with splurging and spoiling on yourself, but you know what I mean when it's excessive and it's using up things and time that should be spent on the things of the Lord. Because our time here, Epic Conquerors, is short. I don't care even if you live to be 120. That is still the blink of an eye compared to eternity. And so what we do here is very important for setting ourselves up for eternity. So you're depositing into your eternal, eternal, wow, there's a word, into your eternal inheritance by what you do here. So it is important. Don't fritter that away and waste it because it's going to pay much dividends later on and as you move into eternity. But it also pays now. Yeah, serving the Lord pays now and throughout eternity. So that's fantastic. Now, what it pays is peace, joy, strength, provision, presence of God. Oh, those things are priceless. And you have that in him. So don't waste that away by wink, wink, wink at something else and letting something else fill those voids in your heart. Let God fill you fully with himself. And so he's telling us here, like we talked a little bit ago, that he wants us to teach our children how God was with us through everything we went through in life and how in that case, he's going to be with them also. But the caveat is we have to serve the Lord with all of our heart. We have to want to, want to, want to serve him and love him. We don't love him because we have to. We love him because we want to. And how we show, Jesus said, you love me if you keep my commandments. So that's how we show love, right? Just like in our marriage vows. We show our love for our partner when we keep our marriage vows and we don't flirt around with everybody else to fill those little empty crevices in our life, need for comfort and this and that and the other. But we let our spouse meet those needs. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And we should tell our children, you have the best mom in the whole wide world. You have the best dad in the whole wide world. We're the most blessed people because we have each other. Things like that. Let your children know the rich heritage that you have in Christ. And so he goes on to say uh, in verse 20, and 21, that when you do that, teach your children and you, you write them on the doorposts of your house. That's why you see it in a lot of Jewish homes. There, there's a little tiny metal thing on the doorpost. And in that, they put a little scroll of, of rolled up paper that has scriptures on it about you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. And they literally put it on the doorposts of their home, being literal about this and on their gates. And sometimes you see that as well in a Jewish home. Verse 21 says that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them 
as long as the heavens are above the earth. So God's promises are yes and amen forever and ever, but we also have a role to play in keeping that covenant intact, don't we? Just like if you don't keep your marriage covenant, it ends in a divorce and it's very painful for all parties. Never, never easy a thing to do. Verse 22, for if you diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all of his ways and to desire to cleave to him, then, 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 here we go. Are you ready? Fasten your seatbelt, epic conqueror. Verse 23, then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you and you shall dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourselves. Now, how are you going to do that? You're going to do that because God is going to fight on your behalf for you. And I tell you what, that is not an equal battle when God gets into the fray with you than those that are your enemies. Let's put it in that vernacular. They don't have a chance because you plus God, that's a majority. Mm -hmm. And verse 24, so many of us quote this and it's it's legit, but we have to look at all the previous verses, right? That it's conditional upon us loving and serving the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our being and teaching our children about it, being faithful in those things. Then verse 24 comes into play. Every place which the sole of your feet shall tread, shall be yours. From the wilderness to, and he names all the different boundaries of the various cities and lakes and rivers. Verse 25, there shall no man be able to stand before you, the Lord your God. For the Lord will lay the fear and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread, as he has said to you. So the Lord will cause people that um, you are or lands that you are to possess or promises that you are to possess to be in fear of you in the right sense to know that, oh my goodness, God is with that person. And I don't want to be found fighting against God Almighty because that's an arm wrestling match. I'm going to lose big time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So in verse 26, he says, behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. So epic conquerors today, God is setting this before you. Every day he sets that before you. In several places he said, choose this day whom you're going to serve. So it's the same idea. You choose blessing or cursing and you do that on your own by your choices that you make. Verse 27, the blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And verse 28, and the curse, if you will not obey the commandment of the Lord your God, but you turn aside from the way which I command you this day to go after other gods, which you have not known. You know, there's so many false gods out there today. We see the Hindu gods, 330 million gods they have. We have Buddha, we have Allah, there's um, all kinds of, there's other Jesuses that come in the name of Jesus, but they're not him. False messiahs, let's put it that way. Um, there's just so many ways, uh, Freemasonry, Illuminati, uh, all these different cults and so on, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, all those things, they serve other gods. Some of them will say that the gods that they serve are equal to Jesus or that he is just one of them, as though there are many ways to God. But we know the scripture is very clear that Jesus is the way. He's the only way. He's not one of many ways. He is the way. And so we have to understand that if we turn aside to other things, then we have cursed ourselves. And so then what happens is our own fault and responsibility because it's what happens when you move away from God's covenant. Then you're out there vulnerable and the enemy goes, oh, good, here comes one we can go in and mess with. And boy, does he ever come in. So you curse yourself when you don't make the right choice to serve the Lord and him only with all your mind and heart and soul and resources and being. That's right. 
Verse 29 says, And when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which you're going in to possess, then you shall set the blessing on Mount Gizeron and the curse on Mount Eal. I don't know what those exact places are, but what it's saying is, as you now possess the provision of God and the di different promises that you have in him, and you know, there'll always be new promised lands for us to conquer. Yeah, I've conquered many a promised land over my lifetime, and there's still more ahead to conquer, but I can do it in Jesus' name. Then I, I received that blessing there. And then verse 30, are they not beyond the Jordan west of the road where the sun goes down? But you, verse 31, are to cross over the Jordan to go in and possess the land which the Lord your God gives you, and you shall possess it and live in it. And you shall be watchful to do all the statutes and ordinances which I set before you this day. So God is saying you're well able to go in and possess the land, go in and do it, cross over the Jordan, and go take that land that I promised you. And so many of us stand at the banks, the river banks of the Jordan, and we're afraid to step in and go to the other side. But we have to know God is with us. And he said, if you'll go, I'll dispossess those people and give you that land because I swore I would give it to your fathers, but you got to go get it. And in our day, we have promises of God too. Healing is a promise. Go and get your promise. By his stripes that he took on the cross of Calvary, you were healed. Now the enemy will try to tell you, but you don't look healed. You don't feel healed. Uh, it doesn't seem like you're healed. Trying to get you to just go, well, I guess I'm not healed. No, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. That's my promised land. I'm going to have it in Jesus' name. What about peace? When you're anxious and frustrated and upset and annoyed and panicking and overwhelmed and fearful, take your promised land. I have the peace of God that guards my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to let go of it. I'm going to possess that provision that God has for me. What about joy unspeakable and full of glory? Ooh, yeah, that comes when we go possess it. And one way that it comes to us when we possess it is when we share the goodness of the gospel of Jesus Christ with other people. Because then the Spirit of God is flowing through you to minister to them. And then it boomerangs back to you multiplied because you gave out the blessing of the Lord. It comes back to you multiplied. Woo, you're going to have that joy. You are going to have that joy. Epic conqueror. Everything is possible in Christ. Go after the provision that God has given you. Cast out devils. Speak with new tongue. Should I pick up serpents or drink any deadly thing? It shall not hurt me. Lay my hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah, I go forth now and preach everywhere. Jesus confirming his word with signs following. That's right. All those things are ours to possess, not only for ourselves, but for our children, for our friends, for people that we encounter in this life. We go in the authority and in the power and in the name of Jesus. So what a privilege, right? Oh, epic conquerors. Thank you so much for listening in on this podcast. I pray it's been a blessing to you to take heed to yourself as to how you're living and how you're making your choices and decisions about life. Whatever temporary thing you quote unquote give up for the cause of Christ, believe me, God will bring that back to you in spades. If not here, definitely on the other side. <laughs> and you will not come behind in any good thing because God is a good God, faithful God, and he knows exactly what you need, when you need it, and he'll bring it to you. So have no fear, but just keep on trucking. Keep on walking by faith and not just by what you see and feel because that will deceive you and trick you out of your faith. And then you won't possess the promised land. Mm. So that's an admonition for us today, isn't it? So what promises are you going after? Not only the ones that I listed, his joy, his peace, the healing and all of that. But what other promises has God given you regarding your children, regarding your prosperity, regarding your family, regarding your workplace, regarding whatever? You have so many promises in God. Go after it in Jesus' name. And as you go after it, keep on loving Jesus with all your heart and soul and mind and share him with others. And you'll watch and see 
going from glory to glory, not gory to gory, but glory to glory. <laughs> There's a big difference, right? All right, Epic Conqueror, so good to be with you today. I look forward to the next podcast, chapter 12, our last one in this series on possessing the promised land. Just go out and keep giving them heaven. That's how we do it. Thanks for sharing the podcast with your friends and family and coworkers. Let people know about it. Also join us in our Epic Conqueror Facebook group. Would love to see you in there. What a blessing to be, as they call it these days, a digital missionary, where we share the good word of the Lord with other people via digital means like a podcast or something like that. So thank you so much for helping us get the word out and encouraging people to keep staying strong in the Lord and go after the promises of God, for they are, yes, and amen, so be it, to those of us who are called according to his purposes. God richly bless you. It's been a joy to share with you today. Look forward to that next chapter 12 coming up to finish this series that we've been on. What a blessing. And we thank God for you. Thank you so much. I ask the Lord to bless you and keep you in a powerful way, to hold on to you tightly. Yes, to bless you, mm -hmm. to heal, to set you free, to give you peace and comfort and joy in the name of Jesus. All right, everybody, I'm going to say it. Ciao for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.